Hello everybody, this is Dren608. The game is Unconditional Surrender, designed by Salvatore Vasta, published by GMT Games. Uh, this is sort of a quick overview of the things that I've done to the module. Uh, some of the additions, Chrome, um, I rearranged the buttons up here at the top so that they're a little more organized. They seem to be kind of haphazard before, and I reordered them. <coughs> added a notes function over here at the very end. You'll notice that the uh, dice are now color-coded, the one, two, and three dice. Um, I also added a new dice button, which is this VE button. If you click on it, it lets you set the number of dice and the sides. Um, when you're doing variable entry, you can end up with a stack of eight, nine, ten units that you have to place on the turn track. This allows you to pick how many ever you need to do. You roll a die, and it just gives you all the results. So you can just go straight down the stack, the, uh, the stack and tell you, you know, what's what. So that's one little Chrome thing that I found annoying to have to always keep hitting. Roll a die, move a unit, roll a die, move a unit. Now you can just have a string of numbers and just start moving the units to the places that they go. Um, the, the map has been restored. It's gotten rid of the big notes that used to be under the, uh, the weather conditions because on the new player aid card, we have the new weather table that uh, Sal just published recently. So there's a whole different thing, probably another whole discussion on what's the odds of you getting five fair weather turns in Russia and so on, but be that as it may, I kind of like this way because it, it the weather is not as deterministic as it was before. When you had that, couldn't be the same as it was the term the term before for three pairs of months. Um, you could kind of plan on what you could pull off. Now, not so sure. Um, what else have I done here? Oh. I've added two dice, um, the attacker and the defender. They use these uh, die roll modifiers. Uh, you'll see that the die roll modifiers now say ADRM, DDRM, so that you can make sure, even if you're not sure which one you're clicking, you'll see what the numbers are. Um, if you have, say, the defender has plus two and the attacker has plus four, if you roll the attacker die, the attacker's comes up, there's his die for die roll and the modifier. Um, to get it to total, believe it or not, Vassal has a bit of a, a hole, a gap there. It would require me to uh, build sort of an invisible unit and do a bunch of things that I really didn't want to add to the module at this point. Um, I might in some future date, but it requires me to do a little bit more programming than I really wanted to do. This is really more for uh, when you're playing back the, and then of course if we roll the defender die, we'll get the same thing. You also notice that it it reports the side, not just your name. So if you are picking sides with the retire button here, where you can join another side, and now I can become the Western Allies, and enroll a defensive die, it will say Western Allies and my name. This is good for when you're playing back a V-log and you see, you know, one guy rolled a four, the other guy rolled a one, and you're not really sure what, what the combat result was. With the modifier sitting there, you can actually add it up and then go cross-index it on the uh, combat results table and be able to tell, oh, it was, you know, even though it was a one-six split, one guy had plus seven, the other guy had, or plus six, and the other guy had minus two, uh, you know, that's still a retreat, so... Um, what else have we done here? Oh, when you're rolling these three dice, the blue, green, yellow. Um, by the way, that yellow was based on the yellow in the warm zone. The green was not on the mild and cold zones. I liked the darker color. I may lighten those in the end. But if you roll the three dice here, they will always come up as a weather die roll. So it will always give you the first die roll. The blue is a one. Cold is a one. Mild is a 2 because the green is a 2. Warm is a 2 because the yellow is a 2. So now with the new table, you're rolling dice except for July uh, 
August and September, you're always rolling three dice and then consulting the chart. So now you can just roll weather and it'll tell you what they are. Um, the biggest thing, uh, two big things here, on all of the aircraft and ships, you'll see here, I'm going to actually zoom in so you can see a little bit better. Um, you'll see there's this little white box with a number in it. That now is your sorties. So if you click there and go, um, instead of control up, it's shift up, it will take you up your number of sorties and report that that unit has X amount of sorties over in the, in the report box up there. When you get to six, an overlay comes up, grays it out and says, cannot activate. Um, the red is not really all that clear, but just the fact that it's grayed out, you know that something's going on. And then when you get back your sorties, it goes away. Now, for those of you that really don't want to mess with that, you can still use um, the control S and then the control up and down to use sortie markers, if you still so desire. I did not take them out. Um, I just gave you an alternative. I found that having to stack my ships, especially in the English Channel, it's like which two are in Cherbourg, which two are in Lahar, which two are in Calais, which two are in Southampton. Um, it got a little messy. So this was an effort to try and straighten that out. Plus, you now can keep things kind of stacked in the hexes because if you uh, just mouse over it, you'll see them all lined up, lined up with their numbers. Um, I also changed all of the aircraft movements. They used to be shift letters. I changed those to alt letters because I found that if you're typing up here in the message box and you go shift, you know, M to start, you know, capitalize a word, and you had the airplane activated, all of a sudden it would just pop up the range. So um, to avoid that, I changed things from shift M, shift A, shift R to alts. So that's something that uh, if you were using my other module that I did that in, you need to kind of get used to using the alt button instead of the shift button. Uh, what else did I add? Ah, oh, yes. Um, by request. Uh, I originally had zones of control. Um, these have changed to Alt-Z instead of Alt-S. But Alt-Z will show the Germans are slightly gray, gray. The Western Allies are green. And guess what color the Soviets are? They're a red. On top of that, I also have the neutrals have this horrible color that I just couldn't get around to trying to do all the individual units. I would have had to assign it to like every unit or make new um, underlying classes for all the different kinds of units. Uh, I am playing with an idea to try and assign these like when it goes to a side to assign it to that side and it would use that side's uh, zones of control, but I haven't got that to work yet, so I'm not going to uh, pursue that at this point. So that's zones of control. The other thing is when you're highlighting a hex, it also goes to the same color as your zone of control. So, see the, the Germans are this sort of graying the hex, Russians are red, uh, you know, the neutrals are that ugly purple, and of course the West would be that green. Uh, that pretty much covers what I did with the units. Um, there was a case uh, that I found in the Vichy production and the Vichy wills. Um, used to not be able to flip them. Nope, still can't. Uh, I'll just refresh my counters and see if that fixes it. There we go. Um, so they can now flip and you'll see what they start at. Starting will, starting production. They didn't used to have that backside. Sal was kind enough to give me the uh, um, the back images, and I took them and put them in here so that they act like all the other minor neutrals that have that. Um, these counters will no longer be needed, so they're actually going to be deleted off of the uh, turn track when I update the scenarios. Um, also, the weather 
things won't be needed as well because we won't be doing that anymore um, with the new weather table. <clears throat> so I do have to update the scenarios, make sure that I have everything uh, set with all of those. And I think that's just about it for the units. I don't think I did anything else that you haven't seen before. Uh, I did add another map board of who's ally. When I get into 1940, late 1944, early 45, maybe even 43 if I'm really lucky, but it's nice to know who's ally people were. So if they are conquered, you know you can play a partisan's marker there. And, you know, whether they're supplying the right units and things like that. So it's just an easy way. Um, I was lazy. I just used world markers. I didn't want to make a whole... I didn't want to make 24 new markers with just flags. That just seemed like an excessive amount of work. Most people probably aren't even going to use this. But it's nice to just kind of have a recording... Late in the war, it's like, oh, wait, Hungary activated as a Soviet ally back in 1940. Germans had to conquer it. That means the Soviets could play partisans in Hungary. So it's kind of important from that standpoint. But otherwise, it's probably just lots of chrome that nobody's ever going to use. But then again, most everything I'm doing here is chrome. Um, the original module was very functional. It worked really well. I added some things just because I wanted more chrome. I wanted more bits and pieces to go for me, uh, just like I made all the, uh, um, you know, all the reinforcements are now on a turn track for this particular uh, setup, so that you don't have to keep scrolling back, you know, always having to jump back up here and say, what, what am I getting this turn? What am I getting this, this next turn? Now you just pop up the turn track and can see everything. Um, it also puts the limits of the eight you know, eight pro markers for each side, the eight bond markers, so that you live by the rules of the game. If you just use what's on the turn track, everything should work out right. Should have the same number of counters as you're supposed to have. Um, other than that, let's see. I think I've covered everything. Um, like I said, I reordered the, the buttons up here. Uh, basically, the weather track, combat result, player aid, turn track. Uh, the national tracks and the faction card, these are all sort of in sequence. You have the three individual factions if you're not going to use the national tracks or the faction card. A notes section, which typically it's all standard um, notes feature from Vassal, so you have the delayed thing where you can, you know, do all this. And private things to, you know, make notes to yourself, things like that. Um... Yeah, I think that's it, kids. So, <clears throat> uh, leave me comments on the video. Tell me what you like, don't like. Um, if you don't want to use all these bells and whistles, you know, use an older module. This is not a required module. This is sort of a, a nice-to-have from my standpoint. I kind of like the extra idea of being able to tell where zones of control are, especially when I'm forming up lines here in Russia, and I want to make sure I didn't leave a hole for the Germans just to run through, which happened in a game I had. I miscounted and didn't have a zone of control in a certain hex. I think it was 2049. And the Germans were able to take an armored unit and run it, like, right up there and then roll me off the, the Niper to the north, taking Kiev, and it was horrible. So uh, that at least lets you avoid obvious mistakes like that. Other than that, I think that's about all I have for this video. Um, so, there you have it, my updates to this, um, to the module. This module will be posted just as soon as I go through the scenarios and make sure that I, um, I know there were some changes um, in the new scenario book along with the errata. I want to make sure that I have all those right and I'm going to reassign uh, all the scenarios uh, in this new module so that they should all be set up correctly. If they aren't, you all can yell at me and I'll go back and try and fix them. Um, other than that, there's not a whole lot 
else to show. Um, like I said, this should be posted up in the next uh, few days. Um, I will probably be going into uh, making a video similar to this with uh, text notes down here, you know, stuff like that, which will, you know, tell my name and then some kind of explanation of what I just did or what I'm going about to do with a unit so that you'll be able to uh, actually play a vlog that will show you all the features and, you know, show you this stuff that pops up and things like that. So that those of you that are getting new or used to the old module and want to know all the silliness that I did, you'll have a vlog attached into the uh, module that will allow you to do that. It'll be called a tutorial. I haven't done that yet because I have to type, you know, what I'm doing as I'm doing it. I can't just click like here and explain it to you. So, like I said, this is Dren 608. That's Unconditional Surrender. It will be Module version will be 2.3, I think. I think it's 2.3 is the next one up. Um, I will see you next time. I do have plans to do some more videos. Uh, there's going to be a solo playthrough, Soviet versus West, in Unconditional Surrender. Probably a solo play playthrough of at least the first epic of Pendragon to kind of show mechanics and how certain things work, because I haven't seen a video that really does that. And I don't know, I might even do one of uh, the Civil War module that I updated just to play a few turns and show people how that all works. So I do have things in the works, just been sitting here reprogramming things and adding all sorts of Chrome to different modules. So I'll get back to like real game videos shortly. So until we see you meet again, bye-bye, stay safe.